Good morning, dear students of the third year. It's a sunny morning today, thank God. The Return of the Native and the Characters in Chapter 3. In this chapter, we will be introduced to characters. Chapter 2 presented uh, an anonymous, presented anonymous characters, but in this chapter, we will be introduced to their names, to their roles, and more. Let's see. Let's, at the beginning, see the scene. The chapter started as such. The locals, including Timothy Fairway, Grandfather Cantel, and his son Christian Cantel, and Susan Nansach. What do they do? They gossip. What is gossip? What does it mean? Gossip means an informal talk on other people's private lives in untrue way. Mostly untrue uh, talk. So interference in other people's life by talking about them, about their private business, private lives. They gossip in their clipped local dialect about what they gossip, the latest news. People gather and started talking, talk about what? About other people. The other people's the private lives. They talk, gossiped about the marriage. So there is a marriage? Yes, there is a marriage of Damon Wildev and Thomas Inyo Bright, which they presume, they, the characters, Cantel and his father, Timothy, Fairway, none such, they presume, believed that this marriage have occurred that same day. Which day? The day of the bonfire party. They believed that the marriage of Wildiff and Yobright occurred that day. What is clipped, clipped dialect, clipped local dialect? Clipped refers or of a person's way of speaking clear and fast, but not very friendly. So it refers to the way of speaking, the way the Egden Heath villagers speak. Local, uh, or the locals, the locals refer to the people living there, the residents, the inhabitants of Egden Heath. Dialect, I believe you know it, but however, uh, it is a form of a language. Language has many forms, when, uh, uh, but all of them are related to one same language. You, it is English, but it is one dialect of English. Can we see an example from the text? Can we read an example from the text? To know, uh, to read about this clipped dialect, to hear about Timothy Fairway and other characters? Yes, of course. The text is our main source. See here, Timothy Fairway interrupted Grand Fair while dancing and says, "We, I told you that the characters uh, lighted a, bon, a huge bonfire and in a circumference on the barrow or rain barrow, started singing and dancing, singing and dancing. Timothy said to, Grandfair. A first stave, Grandfair can't tell. But I am afeard it is too much for the moldy wizard of such an old, old man as you. He should have said an old man, but he used a vowel with a vowel, an old man as you. He said to the wrinkled reveler. Wrinkled indicates that Grandfather Cantel is an old man in his 50s, 60s, because his complexion is wrinkled. Revela, Revela, uh, having fun in dancing, in singing, in singing. Dustin wish there was to three sixes again, Grandfather, as you was when you first learned to sing it? Of course, it is unfriendly. What does he tell him? He is telling him, uh, you are so old and you dance in a way as if you think yourself young again. Do you wish to be young again? 
Grandpa, hey, stopping in his dance. He stopped. He didn't continue. Timothy continued. Doesn't wish was young again, I say. There is a hole in thy poor bellows nowadays, seemingly. Well, behind, what does he mean? The way he talks doesn't reveal to you that he is uneducated? Well, yes, he is uneducated. Uneducated people speak clipped language, uh, bad grammar, the novelist depicts a realistic scene. How did he depict a realistic scene? Through the clipped dialect of the locals. So the purpose of using this dialect and not an, a good English is to show you, to make you feel of the characters and imagine how do they talk. Imagine a villager in front of you or villagers in front of you talking, laughing, dancing and to be able to see them while they are not with you. What more? He, who he, Hardy, Hardy made them talk like countrymen. Why? To emphasize the impression of the village. So maybe you don't live in a village or you do live in a village. You, you have, you can imagine them. You can see them. You can expect the way they behave and the way they talk. Hardy's use of language. Thomas Hardy puts an unnatural language into the mouths of these uneducated locals. It indicates the novelist's aim of depicting realistic characters through a realistic depiction of local language. So by using realistic using a local language the characters appear to you as realistic as real villager as real local laborer who is uneducated and who lives in a countryside Timothy Fairway how does he look he looks pompous sententious man of middle age who is middle age in his 50s who is greatly respected by the other heath folk he asks grant fair cantle again they continued their gossip and how about the new married folks down there at the quiet woman in the other inquired the other here timothy pointing towards a dim light in the direction of a distant of the distant highway but considerably apart from where the riddleman was at that moment resting so he his attention is not towards the riddleman but he is pointing at the quiet woman in the quiet woman in is placed or located on, in the distant highway. Do you remember the highway? So there is an inn there. This inn is called the Quiet Woman Inn. The new married folks are in this Quiet Woman Inn. They live there. What's the rights of the Marabodim? You ought to know, being an understanding man. Again, he uh, addresses Grant Fair, cattle. They gossip about Wildiff and Yobright, Miss Yobright. Who is Grant Fair Cantle? I told you he, he, he is described as being wrinkled here, wrinkled reveler. He is a somewhat senile and always lively ex-soldier of about 69. Do you see he is 69? That's why he hardly described him as wrinkled, having a wrinkled uh, face. Senile, confused. He was an, a soldier, 
therefore he, he is described as an ex-soldier. The word is used, ex-soldier, to refer that he, what he was. Well, again, to put it uh, briefly, the locals gossip the marriage of Damon Wildiff and Thomas and New Bright by the word the new married folks down there at the quiet woman in. This is not my sentence. It's from Timothy's speech. Here, the new married folks down there, he asked about them, how about those, those couple? Damon Wildiff is an ex-engineer who is the keeper or keeper of the quiet woman inn. He is the keeper of the quiet inn. That's why the couple live there. That's why uh, Timothy pointed at, in the direction of the inn. He is a man with an appetite for women. His name even is Demon. He, his name is Damon, but it looks like Demon, an evil, wild, Eve, woman. However, it's my own interpretation, but sometimes writers use names as symbolic. Here, this is Wildiff. This is how he, what he works, what he was, and where does he live, and how does he think? Thomason, the wife, or the, his fiancée, is Klim's cousin. You remember Klim? Klim is the native who will come back from Paris. She is his cousin and Mrs. Yobright's niece. Mrs. Yobright is the mother of Klim Yobright and Thomason is their relative. She is Klim's cousin and Mrs. Yobright's niece. How does she look? She's a young girl of gentle ways and conventional expectations, we will be introduced to her. The chapter imparts that Thomason's aunt, Mrs. Yobright, did not approve of the wedding, and that Klim Yobright, Mrs. Yobright's son, is returning from Paris in a few months for Christmas. So he will come back to Egden Heath in Christmas. This is mentioned in chapter three. You will see. We will read about it. Uh, we will read an example. The locals also notice, this is we, the, we know all of this, all about this from the gossip of the locals. So it's a way, uh, uh, one of the ways of letting the reader know about what happened is by letting characters speak. From their speech, you deduct, you conclude what will happen, who is the speaker, uh, who, what are the events in, uh, the, in the novel. The locals also notice that towards the end of the evening, the only fire that remains lit is a small one nearby at Miss Dover Nap, where Eustacia Vi lives. Who's Eustacia Vi? Well, we knew about Thomason and Mrs. Yobright. This is the, the third woman in this chapter mentioned here. We will know, we will know about her later. But she is, uh, she is the heroine of this novel. The gossipers again begin to dance and sing reels in the local custom, but are interrupted by Redman encountered earlier, who asks for directions to Mrs. Yobright's house. He wants to go to Mrs. Yobright's house. So he interrupted their dancing and singing to ask for uh, that place. Bloom's End. She lives in Bloom's End. Just minutes after the Redman departs, Mrs. Yobright arrives at the bonfire. Who is the Redman? A Redman, the word Redman, 
is a traveling seller of riddle. Red chalk. What is a riddle? A red chalk. Used for marking sheep. Now you know what is a riddle. I believe you have, yani, all of you have noticed sheep that are marked with a red color. This is called, the person who does that is called a riddleman in Egden Heath or in English. They call him a riddleman. So he travels and sells this riddle. Does he have a name in the novel? You see, does have, does have. Yes, he has. When you answer yes, he has a name in the novel. His name is Diggory Van. Diggory Van. He is a practical man of 24. Again, he is young. In the second chapter, if you remember chapter two, Diggory Van and Captain Vi remain anonymous. They appeared in chapter two, but the reader does not know about their names. Merely outgrowths. Why? They look like outgrowths of the heath, especially the nomadic Diggory. Nomadic. A person who lives in the heath is called nomadic. He does not live in the city. He's a traveler. Who died entirely red? Diggory Van, the riddle man, is dyed with red. His complexion, his body is dyed with red. His clothes uh, are dyed with red. Seeming an incarnation of the savage heath itself. They are symbolic, especially the nomadic Diggory, especially the nomadic Diggory or Diggory Venn or the Riddle Man. They are symbolic, an incarnation of the savage heath itself. Captain Vi, who is Captain Vi? He is Eustatia's grandfather. There, is, there should be a space here. Eustatia's grandfather, Eustatia, the heroine, and guardian. He cares for her. A former captain in the British Navy, a reclusive and silent man. He is silent. Do you remember in chapter one, an old man walking with the help of a silver stick who has buttons uh, with an imprint of an anchor? It was this man, Captain Vi, Eustatia's grandfather. He was walking in chapter one. He was in the British Navy. That's why his clothes, in part, uh, his clothes were of, uh, of a sailor, of a Navy soldier. Grandfather Cantel, another example. This is another example on what we have said here. How do we know that all this happened? Let's go on reading. Grandfather Cantil says, I met Mrs. Yobright, the young bride's aunt, last night, and she told me that her son Clem was coming home at Christmas. Do you see? So it is Grandfather Cantil who told the readers that Clem Yobright is coming on Christmas, coming on Christmas here, he said. Again, do you see these quotation marks? It refers that this paragraph is from the text, the text of the novel, chapter three. I met Mrs. Yobright, the young bride's aunt. Again, he told us that she is the aunt of Thomason, the bride. There's only one bride mentioned in chapter three, Thomason Yobright. Last night, and she told me that her son Clem was coming home at Christmas. Wonderful, clever. I believe, ah, I should like to have all that under that young man's hair. Well, then I spoke to her in my well-known merry way, and she said, Oh, that was shaped so venerable should talk like a fool. That's what she said to me. I don't care for her. Be joned if I do. And so I told her, Be joned if I care for ye. I said, I had her there. 
take. I rather think she had you, said Fairway. She, uh, she is, she became victorious, not you. You couldn't win the speech. She won the speech, Fairway means. What do we know about Mrs. Yobright from this, com this conversation or the speech of Cantle? The reader get, what does the reader get from the talk? The reader gets many things. The conversation, first of all, the conversation reveals Mrs. Yobright as Klim's mother. Here, Mrs. Yobright told me that her son, Klim, so she is the mother of Klim, was coming home at Christmas. A widow of inflexible standards. She doesn't have a husband. Her husband is dead. That's why she is a widow. A woman whose husband is dead is called a widow. She is Klim's mother. That's what we know. The relationship between Mrs. Yobright and Klim. What else do we know from this conversation or from Cantle's speech? Timothy asks, seemingly it is however, is it because of the wedding that Klim is coming home at Christmas to make a new arrangement because his mother is now left in the house alone? Do you see the question mark? It is after the, uh, after the brackets to show that the paragraph ends. It's quoted, this, uh, these two, three lines are quoted from page number 27. Now, again, the marriage is emphasized, the coming back or returning of Klim is repeated. Where, uh, when, uh, when, at Christmas, they said it, they repeated that he's coming back at Christmas many times. Uneducated people, villagers, like to repeat conversations. They don't say it once. They don't use a condensed speech, but they repeat and repeat of the same words that you get bored of them. However, for us, it is profitable because we now know, we are sure, when will Klim come back? Uh, who is Mrs. Yobright? Uh, what is Klim's relationship to Thomasin? Mm. Well, uh, and there is a wedding. Is, is there, did the wedding happen or not? Let's see, continue. Well, these minor characters, I, as I told you, uh, they have a, a particular role. Why did the writer present minor characters? Why he didn't present only a hero and a heroine? They have a function, they have a role. In this section that we have read from chapter three, the novelist introduced the minor characters. Uh, pardon, the working class locals. They are working class, they are locals or inhabitants who live on the heath. Local laborers whose simple dialect and observance of local customs form the cultural backdrop for the novel. From the dialect, from their interests, from their roles, the background of the novel is revealed, the cultural background, the cultural backdrop of the novel is revealed. We can know from their way of speaking, from uh, their discussions, gossiping about, we can know or learn about uh, the theme of the novel, like paganism, as I told you in the previous lecture, about faith, about the nature of the land there or the environment there. Well, this is the end of the lecture. Uh, again, I repeat, send me any question you have to the classroom. Go on reading chapter five 
4 and chapter 5 and wait my assignment on Thursday. See you later.